be asked this question in future, but you know the allocation for capex at 11.1 lakh crore. Does it seem like a lofty goal, considering that you know uh, you could not even do 10 lakh crore uh, in this year? No, but not really. I mean, we we've done only two lakh, three lakh. That's not the case. Yeah. We're closer to 10. It's also because absorption has its own limits. Whether it's the states or the departments within government of India, when the capital expenditure is undertaken through the outlays given to them, it is only that much within 12 months that they can do and not beyond. So sometimes reaching the target, however ambitious it is, is to the last mile difficult within 12 months. Had we given them a few more months, they will probably even complete that. But the condition for these capital expenditure which I have announced since last two years, three years, is that that amount should be utilized within the year. So many of the state governments which take the money, which are very good in implementing, in fact, I find states very enthusiastic in wanting to avail of this facility. The difficulty comes that if you restrict them to using it within 12 months, and which is what we aim at, we want them to use it within 12 months. So I'm not saying restrict in that sense, but within 12 months when you are expected to spend that money, there are times when completely utilizing it becomes difficult. They partly use it. That is why 10 lakhs you might reach 9, 9.2 and not touch 10, but achieving 9.2 within a matter of 12 is, I think, good enough. So to increase it to 11, I'm very hopeful it will definitely get used. And uh, the amounts which are being given to the states are also having high utilization. Guruji, if I'm right, you get a sense that there is an indication of tapering of government spending. Uh, you know, I know you've, we've discussed this in our last interview as well. Uh, you expect private sector also now to do some heavy lifting. So we, we, are, we are seeing some of the you know, some of the sectors looking up now. There are investments in steel, aviation, power, machinery. Some of, but are you happy with, with the level of private sector participation? You said that, you know, they are like Hanuman, and Hanuman has no idea of, you know, his own power. When do you think that this Hanuman will lift the economy mountain? Well, I think, as you said, they are coming out. There is investment happening. The PIL, uh, no, uh, P... PLI. PLI, PLI scheme is also helping them. Yes. So investments in newer areas do have a slightly longer gestation period. It's not as if their brownfield projects are getting additional money. That also is happening. But the interest in the sunrise sector is really obvious now. People are taking a lot of interest and you're seeing them coming forward. Okay. Well, that's happening news. Uh, you know, one, one more question on the stress that is being seen in the rural economy. You know, your higher allocation outlay to Manrega also in, is an indication, betrays, uh, you know, the stress on rural economy. Uh, you know, if you look at the results of FMCG companies, consumer durable companies, uh, you know, even if you look at the Nielsen data, it shows that the rural volume growth has underperformed urban volume growth for almost seven quarters now in a row. So what is your prognosis of rural demand? And how do you think we will deal with this going forward? I'm not sure if I'll be able to describe how I view uh, what is happening in the rural areas. Let us recognize that there is a lot of shift in the way employment is panning out. Let us recognize that migration is now looking at redefining itself in a way. Many people who went back to their villages with some skills acquired are wondering if they can continue being there and utilizing and benefiting from the skills that they've acquired. Uh, industries too today are allowing a lot of work from home and many who are avoiding traveling are also staying back. So the shift will have to be recognized. But equally that's not to say people are staying back home without work or staying back and working from there with large companies being established everywhere else. So there is a transition happening undoubtedly. Yes. Second, there's also this little savings which is coming through, which we are seeing from the various fixed deposits which are growing as different from small savings. Yes. 
you are also seeing some middle class looking at savings through the stock markets, DMAT accounts and so on. So the indicators with which we are looking at the rural economy may vary and there are very many newer indicators which we may not want to miss out on. Yes, I agree FMCG uh, market will also tell us that uh, consumable, durable consumables are not being consumed as much as before. Yes. But, well, I take that as one indicator, but equally the kind of activities which are now happening in the rural areas because of better connectivity, because of other uh, digitization are also yet to be measured, I would think. Okay. Uh, one thing related to, you know, the job market, especially, uh, you know, if you look at the campus recruitment in engineering colleges and MBA colleges, so on one side, you know, there is this, uh, the economy is doing well and all, all, all indicators point to that. But on the other hand, you know, the campus recruitment this year has been muted, uh, salaries have been lower, uh, many students have not got a job offer yet. Uh, how do you see this, uh, you know, in relation to the overall big picture? See, the question about employment, I am afraid we are repeatedly focusing only on those indicators pertaining to the formal economy, which is important. I am not denying its role. So college recruitments, uh, I am like campuses, are important. But equally, the jobs that are getting created in the middle and lower order are not getting counted at all. I would look at the way in which banks and their credit offtake is happening in small and medium businesses. The new companies which have got registered, which is the data which I have put out yes. from the MCA, the number of new companies which have started are certainly not people who are being recruited for jobs. They are people who are investing money, believing in their skills, registering a company and probably giving jobs for others. Why would new companies get registered in a bigger number than before if employment is not being offered? The companies cannot operate in vacuum yes. without human beings in them. So I think a, a fairer, open and an exhaustive picture of India's employment, both in the formal and non-formal areas will have to have uh, some kind of a wider base with which and we need to bring in such data so that the discussion can be more informed. And some of I think the global slowdown is also having an impact on our jobs, especially at the higher end, right? I mean, in IM campuses or engineering colleges, etc. Equally, because of the way in which artificial intelligence is coming, the kind of job requirements that are expected of new recruits are also changing. Yes. So the people with old skill sets are now expected to have additional newer skill sets for entering into a certain area which till now did not exist. 